Many Magic players are starting to ask themselves this single question. Should I buy myself a Jeweled Lotus? Do I need to pick up a Mana Crypt just in case it becomes unbanned? Well, we're going to cover those questions a lot in today's video, but we're also going to talk about what's going on in this market because things are... well, we'll talk about it. The news has started to settle in, the shock is over, and we're left with the question. I sold my stuff, I didn't own one before, is now the time to buy myself a Mana Crypt? Should I be picking up maybe a Jeweled Lotus? Are the prices going to go up or down? Am I going to get a deal? What's going to happen? Welcome back everyone. MTG Moxman here, thank you again for hanging out with me on my channel. And I get the discussion because it's one that's happening a lot right now. Now, I'll be honest, I don't have a Mana Crypt. I've always wanted to get one for my Commander decks. Then it got banned. So you're kind of thinking, oh, well, no, no biggie for you. But I still want one. I want to get an original version like I had as a teenager. That's the goal. That's the, And a lot of players are feeling the same way. I do have a Jeweled Lotus. I opened it here on the channel back when we were opening those boxes. I kept mine and I never sold it. Didn't let it go. Some people are in that boat too. Depends on where you fell and which side of the line. Did you panic? Did you not panic? Did you panic? Did you not care? There's a lot going on out there for how each individual player feels about the banning, about the news itself, and how they feel about Wizards of the Coast taking over. But there are things we can do. There are things you can glimpse into to give you an idea of how the greater populace is feeling, and that's the sales numbers. Now, I'll be honest, there were some really hype sales on my Saturday top 10 videos. You can go back and watch those a couple weeks back. Massive sales for those products. One where people were like panic selling and one where people were buying them all back, but now we're past that. So what's going on now? Well, I'm not gonna show you graphs and stuff today, but if you went and took a look around, you'll see the sales are actually pretty consistent with what they were before the announcements. Interesting, right? Mana Crypt is basically selling on par with where it was before. Sales prices have actually recovered for the cards Mana Crypt as well as Jeweled Lotus. You'll see a little dip on MTG stocks and kind of bounces back. Local stores still have it at kind of like the same price they had at maybe two or three bucks less. Really, everything seems to be leveling out. But the card's still banned. And the price is leveling out. And the sales are staying consistent. Well, that amount of information doesn't really add up to what it should add up to, right? You think prices would still be falling because you can't play it. So maybe somebody knows something that most of us don't know, but chances are people aren't taking any chances. They're buying the card back and they're holding on to it. They are reversing course, taking back a bad decision, a good decision, whatever they think they're going to do for them, they're going and doing it. How else can we explain Mana Crypt selling at that same rate? How can we explain Jeweled Lotus and all the different forms and variants still selling and being bought and sold daily? And with those types of sales means there is belief, there is hope, there is faith that those cards still have value. There is a chance they will get unbanned. And that little bit of hope, that little bit of faith, whatever you want to put stock into, players are buying the card again. They are selling the card again. And the markets are open for this exchange of products. And that's very interesting for a card that's banned right now in the most popular format. It lets you know that players down the line are hoping for an unbanning at some point, and this will signal information, not just to resellers, not just to you know, some platform you're buying the card off of, but to Wizards of the Coast. It is sending a message to Hasbro, letting them know when they check their actuarials that these products are not losing value, players believe in them, still desire them and want them, and it may actually help the company make a decision sooner rather than later, depending on what they are looking for inside that value market. How do they want to represent themselves going forward? Now, a lot of players could hope one way or the other, a company is going to do what is best for the company, and then they will take all other considerations you know, in, into context and decide which ones work for them and which ones don't. For me, it was the fascination of seeing all the local stores, all the stores I talked to, sold out of both cards. Both. Wish lists created for people wanting to buy, even at the new prices, Jeweled Lotus and Mana Crypt. 
Now, I'm not really touching much on Extortionist because it doesn't have nearly the volume of sales to even represent itself here today as some card people want unbanned or desire to have back right away. It is still a value point for Wizards of the Coast. They still have value tied in the card and they probably want to milk that for a little bit more. But there's lots of copies that have come to market and have not been rebought at this point. Lots of stores I know have multiple copies from the versions created. So I'm not going to jump on that one because the market... Again, it's speaking to us and letting us know that they're okay with that banning. That one is not nearly as offensive as the other two. The idea of fast mana to make your game faster is something players obviously are appealing to. They like the idea of it. They want more of it, not less. But a creature like Nadu or like Extortionist that may bend or warp the game a little much for players, maybe those cards are okay to be gone. It's interesting to see that happen because it will send the message to Wizard. Well, look, those cards aren't selling, but those ones are. The players are telling us what they want. And it doesn't have to be a minority voice of players who want to ban everything. It doesn't have to be another minority voice saying unban everything. The numbers tell the company. They get the data. Most of these subgroup sellers and stuff, they all get to find out what's going on. They'll see how many sales are being transactionalized across the market. And that will tell them how popular a card is. They will look at how the cards are being played and where they're being played and how often. And that will help make decisions. All these things are without the context of us players jumping in and doing things. But even though we're not being pro or con, maybe with our voices, our wallets being open and buying the card tells the company something. That's something really to keep in mind going forward because anything you buy, anything you represent on that opens your wallet is something the company is going to take an interest in. Now, will these sales continue? Well, multiple copies are selling every day. Not just on TCG Player, you can check Card Market. The numbers change all the time. They go up, they go down. They're being bought, they're being sold. Buyers and sellers are meeting in the middle and finding their price. This allows Wizards of the Coast to know what the price should be in the secondary market, how to value the card, and which premium product to put that card into. Or, as a show-stopping card like we saw in the uh, Lost Caverns of Ixalan before the banning. Didn't go over so well for Wizards of the Coast at that point, but we'll have to wait and see how it all plays out. Either way, I'll be curious to see. So I hope you guys found this a little bit informative today, a little bit of kind of like contemplative, because there's a lot going on in the market. There's a lot of stuff that moves quietly. It doesn't have to have big news going across saying, look at what just happened. But the sales are there. The data's backing it up. And these cards are still selling, being bought, and then selling, being bought. It's just going around in a wheel still at about the same pace, maybe a little bit slower than before the banning, but not noticeable enough to say it's not, you know, the sky's not falling. Crazy stuff. Drop some comments. Let me know what you guys see at your local stores. How are things selling, not selling? What are players talking about out there when it comes to these two particular cards? Guys, thanks again for stopping by the channel. A reminder, if you enjoyed today's content, if you like hanging out with the Mox, man, why not do it every day? I put out content every single day. I look forward to seeing you guys here. Like and subscribe to the channel. Turn on that notification bell. Guys, have a great day today. We'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks again to all the fantastic patrons on my channel. Without these patrons here to support, we would not be making daily uploaded content for everyone on YouTube to enjoy. Because these patrons, I get to do this every day, which is pretty special. And I want to take a moment to always thank them each and every day. So if you're one of my patrons, if you're a YouTube membership member, you are part of my creative process. And I want to take this moment to say thank you. See you tomorrow. You've made it to the Ramble Jamble. You've gone past the curtain. You got your backstage pass. You've gone down the yellow brick road. Avoided the witch. Who's now stuck under a house with her feet curling up. Scary flying monkeys. But you have to look at it from Wizards of the Coast Wizards of the Coast's point of view, not ours. They're losing money if they can't reprint the cards. They're gonna see the sales numbers we just talked about today, but they're gonna see it in a much wider spread because all those platforms that we pay for our cards at local LGS, all those point of sale systems, are all like TCG player and they're all owned by companies like like eBay and stuff that will all report back. They'll sell the data, right? They shouldn't, but they probably will. There's got to be some way. And you look at that and you ask yourself, when you look at those sales numbers, would you want to give up all that revenue? All those special cards that have just kept, the golden goose just kept on giving? All right. And we as players look at this like a trilogy. There's all kinds of crazy news unfolding. We can't wait to see what's going to happen. And even, even when the acting in this, in this film series, even this saga 
a film series that we call Magic the Gathering, even when the acting gets bad or the script is horrible, we still love it. We love it so much that we want to watch it. Even when it's bad, we want to know what's going to happen. And some of us, by the way, we ignore all the new trilogies. We stick to the old and tried and true and say, they can never reprint these. Guys, thanks a lot for hanging out today. Boomstick edition, special director's cut. It's going to be quite the show over the next 24 months. Can't wait to report on it with you guys here. It's going to be epic. Guys, have a great one today.